Good afternoon. So, uh, first of all, I would like to get to the ground to make sure that, you know, our speech then gets somewhere before to show what we are doing to in Qatar Science and Technology Park. <clears throat> I think that most of you think that today you are in Doha. Do you? Yeah. I think this is the huge mistake you can make. You are not in Doha. You are in one of the digital cities in the world. And you are communicating with other people in the world. In a way, you will be amazed, because I'm sure, you know, you didn't realize that. You know what is the real face of the data today. How many data are going back and forth from the network, you know? How many millions of data, just for example, you know, Walmart manage every day or every hour, you know? Or how many photos are on Facebook? Or, you know, what it took, you know, to decode the human genome, okay? Something that today, you know, you can do very easily in one week. It took quite a long. So the world is changing while we are saying the world will change. We are using it while we are saying we will use it. So things are changing and we are using it. As we said, you know, before one of my colleagues said, you know, we are people on Twitter, you know, one gentleman from Doha, you know, talking with one gentleman into the United States or in Italy or in Spain, they don't recognize that. They don't care about that. They just communicate. This is the point. So the game is completely changed, you know, and as other people said before, you know, there are several components because the game has completely changed. You know, open source and cloud computing has been just one of it, you know. And the more and more corporate functions today are changing. I will give you an example of what we are doing, what is happening. You don't even know what is happening all over around. Everything is now going on the net. It's working on the net. And some of the people are still thinking, you know, that they have their their own computer with their own data. And honestly, you know, I did not understood very well uh, the example that uh, the gentleman for Georgetown did together, because he said he feels uh, safe if he has his own data on his own computer in his own office, until he, he does not connect to Ethernet. Because then as soon as he connects there, it's the same if your data are everywhere. Because to my grandson, it may take 10 minutes to get to your computer anyway. And we have shown this with, you know, WikiLeaks and all the other data we are getting even for more secure site. But, you know, if you look now what is happening in the, in the world, you are just amazed, you know. Sometimes we think, you know, how much the data we have around us are growing minutes per minute, seconds per second. If you think that just in 2008, households in the United States has been bombarded with 36 zettabytes of information, over 34 gigabyte per person per day. Who is going to take care of all this data? How you are managing all this data? What does it mean, all this data? You know, we talk a lot in Education City and all over the world about uh, publications, okay? How many publications you make, how many books you write, or how many things you do? You know how many publications Chinese do? You know how many Chinese we have around the world? Wow, there are so many. <laughs> so many. Who is going to check what is in these publications? How can you see that is real innovation and is not just the industry of cut and paste, which is very well used all over the world, by the way? So this is the, the real point. You know, how do I get to the point what is real and what is just PowerPoint or Kino for the one that likes Apple? But another part, which is also very important, you should take care, you know, exactly as the gentleman before me said, you know, we think about the data, what we are creating, what we are writing, what we are producing. We don't think about the data that are not produced by human beings, what we call the martial the machine, you know. Machine to machine talking. You know what is the biggest problem from AT&T in the United States? Just the signaling of the iPhone. All the data that are not related to the person, to the user, that are generated to the iPhone, they go to the BTS, they go to the switch, they go to the HLR, and they go all over the network. Now, you saw I said a lot of uh, technical name. Don't ask me what it means because I don't know, but it was fine to say so, you know, just to make sure that you get impressed. But then, you know, that is the point, you know. 
the data are growing over and over and generated by the machine, they talk each other, you know, over the net. And this is one thing that we also have to face and think about uh, uh, what is creating, what we are creating. How to make sense of all the data we are creating in an open digital world. If you see, you know, if you just compare the data coming from the hardware producer and the data coming, you know, from analysts or that we know about the data, today we do not have enough storage to store all the data we are producing. This is a fact. Otherwise, you know, HP, Oracle, former Sun Microsystems, IBM, or whatever, they should double their capacity, and they cannot. So what is happening to all this data? Well, I may tell you what is happening to all this data if I think when I lose my contact on my Mac and I ask my IT services to restore my data, you know. It's like to ask to my grandson who is 11 years old to get a degree tomorrow morning. Almost impossible, you know. That is the reality. In a way, we are losing control. And this is another point we should uh, take care of it. And this is just to tell you about things, you know, you, you don't really need to read about it, otherwise you really get scared. But in a few moments, we will start to talk about Yottabytes, which is a unit which is even too big for you to think about it. And that is, and that is the reality. You know. It will be nice to ask to my friend Marwan how much data we have in Qatar. It is huge. And how we do, do we control? And how the organizations are related to each other? You know, QTEL, MIDSA, and ICT Qatar, and, all the, and I'm talking only about data control. What, what does it mean? You know, and, and what do we do with the data? So then at the end, what do we need to do? We need to have a network which is able to deal with the monster. And the monster, you know, is what we have created. So then now we need a solution which is able to deal with the monster. All this data which are just bombarded us everywhere, you know, which can really make our life better and safer, you know. And this is, you know, all about what we are doing in Qatar Science and Technology Park together with the Qatar Science and Technology Park ecosystems. And I will give you just a few uh, examples about that. Just think now, just for a second, you know, one thing which is very well known. If you think an electrocardiogram, okay, everyone knows what it is. I'm not sure I can explain, but I'm sure you know what it is, okay? Alone, the electrocardiograms generate 1,000 reading per second. 1,000 reading per second, which are vital need to be controlled, need to be transmitted, need to be read understood. Okay, you have to take a decision about it. Okay, and now I would like to talk about three different solutions that we have done in uh, QSTP. One of it is, is known, the other one, other two are not, and we will announce soon also because I think it's a good thing about Qatar, something that uh, Her Highness Sheikh Amosa said a few days ago, we all should be proud about it. So let's go for the, for the first one. So that is what we are working about. It is all about communication between people. The rest is technology. Today we are talking about cloud. Yesterday we were talking about internet. You know, when I started, most of you were not even born. We were talking about COBOL assembler, you know, uh, 1070 architecture, you know, 360 and how to migrate, you know, from annual to IBM, back and forth. So this is an infrastructure we have done in Qatar Science and Technology Park together with Qatar University Wireless Innovation Center, which is a branch of Qatar University and belongs to the QSTP ecosystems, and together with several other companies from all over the world. So in reality, it is a telemonitoring telemedicine platform. So then we can go in details about it I don't think it really matters today, but what it matters is that for the first time in the history of Qatar, as far as I know, this solution done in Qatar, done by Qatari, has been sold to a European country. And we will have a great announcement about that and will be used by a city of seven million inhabitants to provide telemedicine, telemonitoring, and to study, to study the lifestyle of the children of the city, what we have already done in Doha, okay, to educate them, 
to have a correct lifestyle. Why this is important? Using the technology to have a better life, because I'm sure you know 60% of the disease are due to wrong lifestyle. And we are talking about diabetes, we are talking about cardiopathy, we are talking about other things. If you have a correct lifestyle, you have less probability to get the disease. If you get the disease and you have a right lifestyle, you need less medicine to live and you have a better quality of life. Yeah, the other one I would like to, to talk about in one minute and a half, it's ICRA. I think you all know ICRA means read, okay? And it's also the first word of the Holy Quran. Okay, so this is a project we are working on. We had the honor to give the first demo to Arainas Shekamosa two days ago. So this is a platform designed on the base of the cloud, completely open, which allows okay, you to communicate in different languages, having you know, books, video, voice, and interacting with the computer in voice. So that means that everything can be connected and no matter the language you use, you communicate with the others, which is completely revolutionary. And we are doing it here. We will provide this as a service also to some external TV, international TV outside Qatar, you know, and can be also used for scientific use. And we will work with my colleagues who sit there from Bloomsbury and other private library in Qatar. We have already achieved the first thing, which is very important from cultural and historical point. We have already translated the book for ancient Latin to Arabic, which is in a way to go back to centuries, because it was a Roman Empire called Frederick II. He was educated by the Arab. He did appreciate the Arab culture, and he wrote a book that was called Cum Avibus, Cum, uh, no, Cum Hunting with Avibus, so how to hunt using the bird. Okay, so we have translated it in Arabic using the engine based on artificial intelligence, which is here, teaching the logic to it. So that's just an example that things can be done. The only obstacles we have is that, you know, sometimes we don't believe in what we can do, which is easier than what we think in reality. And then, of course, as you know, Dr. Sheikha said before, what is important is to have an infrastructure. You know, in all this project I mentioned, we also had a strong cooperation and support from QTEL and the VOD from Qatar. Now you need technology to do that. And we also are working on technology because you don't transmit, you know, thousands of billions of data just for medical. You need technology to do that. And in QSTP now we are working on the long-term evolution protocol. You know, this is an idea of a Canadian company, Wymatech, who has now established a Qatari company, Wymatech in QSTP, that is working with Qatar University Wireless Innovation Center. And we are already negotiating this with two operators in the United States, as well as with an operator in Europe. So that's give you the image of what you can do when you know where you are coming from and where you would like to go. I know I took more than two minutes, but I think that was important. Thank you.